Hello guys, welcome to Edglow. So today we're going to start with our second lesson in this Python series. In this lesson, we learn about the input and output functions in Python. And let me tell you that by the end of this video, you'll be able to start coding. So before starting with the input and output functionalities, we should first know what the script and shell mode is. And after that, we'll discuss about the input function and the output function. So at first, we'll start with the shell mode. The shell mode or in other words, the ideally editor is used to evaluate simple Python expressions. So this is a simple Python expression which we'll learn in the fifth video. So after discussing about the shell mode, we'll now discuss about the script mode. So the script mode is actually the place where the codes are written. We will see the script mode after the third video. So till here, we are done with the script and shell mode and now we'll discuss about the input function. So input is a keyword which asks a user to input some data or information. Actually, the whole concept of programming can be summarized in this diagram. You write a program which asks for an input, then processes the input and at the end you get the result. So, in order to get an input from you or any user, Python uses the input command. However, the computer simply does not accept any input as it is. The computer accepts input from the user depending on their data types. For now, you just remember that inputs could be of four data types. That is integer input, character input, float input and string input. And for the data type, remember any information in computer is called data and types of data are called data types. That's it. Now we'll discuss how to take inputs for various data types. In that we will see how to take a string or a character input. Then we will see how to accept an integer input. Lastly, we will see how to accept a floating point input. To refresh, a character is anything single. It could be an alphabet or a single digit or a symbol and a character is generally written within single quotes. So to take a character as input, we use variable name equal to input open close bracket. In a code, if you have a line as any variable equal to input open close bracket, the computer will understand that it has to ask for a character input. And suppose you enter P, the value of the input P that you have entered is stored in the variable A. So a equal to input open close bracket with input as p will mean a equal to character p. Now to enter a string as an input, we use st equal to input open close bracket. For division, a string is anything written within single quote, double quote or triple quotes. A string is a collection of character. So to take a string as an input, we use st equal to input open close bracket. So if the user enters such in the variable st will contain such in and we can say st equal to input open close bracket with input as such in means st equal to such in. Now here is a small piece of information that I want you to remember. I am saying this here because a lot of people make this mistake and I don't want you to do so. Suppose you have written st equal to input then the computer expects either a character or a string from you because the syntax for accepting a character and a string are the same. And then suppose you enter 23. Then what I want you to remember is that the computer will treat this 23 as a string which is supposed to be and not a number which means you cannot do mathematical operations like addition or subtraction on them as we cannot perform mathematical operations on a string as this will raise errors. However, these errors can be corrected in two ways. One, either by typecasting which you will learn in the sixth video or by taking the input as an integer. So now we'll discuss as to how to take an integer as input. So the syntax for accepting an integer input is by typing n equal to int open bracket input open close bracket and then a closing bracket. So in this case, if the user enters 23, then the variable n will store the number 23 and certainly you can perform mathematical operations on it. Till here, we are done with taking an integer input and now we'll discuss how to take a floating point input. Now, in order to take a float as an input, you have to type f equal to float open bracket 
input open close bracket and then a close bracket. Here f is a variable and now let's assume that you enter a number 23.76. As float are decimal numbers then the variable f will hold 23.76 and you can very well perform mathematical operations on it. So till here we have completed with all types of input. Now it is always good to know in programming that when you actually need to give an input and for that we give statements. For example n equal to int input please enter a number certainly means that the computer will ask you to enter a number when this line will be executed by the computer. So the computer will show please enter a number which means that the computer is expecting an input and if you enter 23 for example then the value of n will be equal to 23. So after discussing about the modes and the input function we will now discuss the output function. So the work of the output function is to display things like value of variables, string etc. The command used is print open close bracket. Let's take some examples. First print open close bracket double quote Sachin close bracket. The output is the string Sachin. In the second example we have a equal to 5. Here a is a variable and then we have print a. The output is 15 that is the value of variable a. Now there is something to be cautious here. In this example print Sachin. Here Sachin will be treated as a variable and not as a string. As I had told earlier that strings are generally written within double quotes. In this case if we would have declared Sachin as a variable which would be equal to double quote Sachin then the program would have been correct and the output would have been double quote Sachin. So finally we have started with coding though with really small codes but this is where everyone starts. In the third video we will start with the coding that actually comes in your exams or your in labs or your assessment and from then on we will move to apply all these concepts and make bigger code after the fourth video. Okay. Now let's see how to print multiple variables or string or a combination of the two in a single print statement. For example we have a equal to 10 and in the second line we write print open bracket a comma double quote hello and close bracket. So the output for this code will be 10 space hello. Here you can see that we can print more than one variable or string just by putting a comma between them. So as I said earlier we can print multiple variables or string in the same line. So print open bracket 1 comma 2 comma 3 close bracket will give 1 space 2 space 3 as output. Let's take another example. If you type in the script mode print welcome in the second line print 2 in the third line print adglow then the output is going to be welcome to adglow with all the words in different lines. The reason was that whenever a print statement is executed the cursor moves to the next line. But if you still want to print welcome to adglow in a single line you will have to write end equal to open and close quotes and then you will get welcome to adglow in a single line. Here the important thing is to remember that whatever you write within the quotes of end equal to open close quotes then that will be printed as the joiner between the words. So if you want to print a meaningful statement then you just have to put a space between the single quotes and then the output will be welcome to adglow with spaces in between the words. So till here we are done with the modes, the input and the output functions and now we will see some basic input output codes and this will mark the starting of our coding in python. So the first example is to take an integer as input and printing it. So let's take a variable as int underscore value equal to int input open bracket double quote enter a number and in the next line we have print int underscore value which is the variable. So as you remember int is the data type and the syntax is int open bracket input and then the message that tells the user to enter a number and the print statement helps to print the value of the variable. So when the program runs the computer displays enter a number and suppose you enter the number 13 then the variable int value will contain the value 13 
and after the first line when the second line that is the print statement is executed the value 13 is displayed and you should also remember that giving a message in a program is optional the program even without the message runs perfectly in this example we'll see how to take a float data type as an input and then displaying it so the syntax to take float as an input is variable name for example float underscore value equal to float open bracket input open bracket double quote the statement that is enter a number and the second line we have the print statement with print open bracket the variable name that is float underscore value here the variable name is float underscore value and the keywords are input and output so when you run the program the first line of the program will be executed and the computer will ask you to enter a number and suppose you enter 13.96 the variable float underscore value will hold the value 13.96 and when the second line of the program that is the print statement is executed the computer will print the value of the variable that is 13.96 now let's see how to take the combination of int and float as input and displaying them together actually we just need to do the same thing as we did earlier for taking an integer as input, we type int underscore number, which is the variable equal to int open bracket input open bracket double quote and enter an integer number close quote double close brackets. For taking a float input, we type float number equal to float open bracket input open bracket double quote enter any float number close quotes and close double bracket. Then we type print open bracket int underscore number comma float underscore number which are the int and float variables respectively and then print float number and int number so let's see what will happen if you run the program when you run the program the first line is executed and the computer will ask you to enter an integer number suppose you enter 13 then the variable int underscore number will contain the number 13 and then the second line is executed and suppose you enter 13.96 then the variable float underscore number will contain 13.96 when the third line is executed int underscore number that is 13 is printed and float underscore number that is 13.96 is also printed in the same line as they are the part of the same print function when the fourth line is executed the float underscore number that is 13.96 is printed and then the word and is printed and at last the int underscore number that is in is printed. So now I feel that you have started to understand how the keywords like input and output and the data types work in programming. In this we will take a character as an input and then print it. So for taking a character we type ch equal to input open bracket double quotes enter a character double quotes close bracket close. The next line will be to print the character. So we'll type print in bracket ch and in the next line we'll try to print the same character but with a message. So when the program is run the first line will be executed. The computer will ask you to enter a character and suppose you enter the character f. Then when the second line is executed the character f is printed and when the third line is executed the computer will print the entered character is f. So now we'll take a string as input and print it. So the first line will be st equal to input open bracket open quotes enter a string close quotes close bracket. The second line will be print st and the third line will be print st comma edglo. So when the first line is executed the computer will ask you to enter a string and suppose you enter hello. After the first line the second line will print the value of the variable st and that is hello. And then the third line will print st and edglo together and that will make the output as hello edglo. So with that we come to the conclusion and in the next video we'll see the operators. So that's it for today. Thank you.